what is the basis of classification so we discussed that there is a lot of variety of organisms and whatever the time we have it's not sufficient to study these organisms separately individually one by one you cannot study these organisms then how how can we study these organisms whatever the variety millions of species are found we can study these organisms in groups so you need to group them you are given different items to you different objects are given to you and you are asked to group them how do you do that so you are given uh, some kind of a toys different kind of toys and you are asked to separate them how do you do that so you can separate it you can group them you can take certain things so you are given some toys so these toys there are some cars some top some shapes so likewise different toys are given on basing what you will make the classification make the grouping based on some feature based on some character based on the appearance you see that here you can categorize them soft toys that are teddy bears and such kind of things as to soft toys and you can take the other thing as hard toys and you can separate them the plastic ones separate plastic toys or you can separate them based on the color plastic in the sense you can separate them based on material so material is the character here you are considering the material based on material some are made up of out of plastic some are made out of wood so based on the material you can divide based on based on the color you can div uh, divide them some are red some are green some are blue so you make three groups blue green red so likewise on basing the color you can and size small medium big based upon the size so in this way there are so many criteria based on which you can divide them toys played by boys and girls you can do that so there are so many ways by which you can do the classification but finally there should not be any confusion in that so that is the way you have to make the division so you must choose the best criteria to make the grouping so that is what called as this classification so on basing what the classification of organisms is done on basing what the organisms are classified greek philosopher aristotle he classified the organisms he classified the organisms to that are living on land and living in water so can we take this criteria living in a particular place as a basic idea of classification the basis of classification say for example living in the water it consists of starfish octopus blue whale so you see what is the, the various kind of uh, difference here shark or uh, any other small fish sea horse so are they all similar no you see the corals are also animals they are the sedentary they are the fixed animals so if you see their internal functioning their internal organ system their feeding everything is different they are not matching with each other so they have a lot of differences the only common similarity is their habitat they are living in water so it is invalid you cannot take such a criteria to classify or to group the organisms so if you do so based upon the habitat they are living in water if you group all of them together one group if you study any one organism you cannot apply that study to all these organisms because they are different now you know the present classification all the birds are classified under aves aves are the birds 
So if you study any particular bird, most of the things are similar with all the other birds. If you study the digestion pattern of a bird, you can apply that to all the birds. Most of the birds will be having the similar. Right? So whatsoever study you do on one particular organism and with less minor variations, it will be applied to the other members of the group. It should be applied to the other members of the group. So in such a way you have to classify. But this classification, you studied about blue whale, its digestion, its reproduction, its life cycle, everything. Can you apply this, this thing to the starfish? So can we apply? Can we apply the study about one member of this group to the other member? It is not possible. So this grouping is invalid. Grouping that animals living in water, animals living in on land, it is invalid. So you cannot classify the organisms based on such criteria, such characteristics. So what is the basis of classification? We need to have proper characteristics. Characteristics. So the characteristics are the main things basing on which classification of organisms is done. So what are these characteristics? So the characteristic means it should define the appearance or behavior of an organism based on the appearance or behavior. Based on this, we will take a grouping decision. Yes, these organisms have the similar appearance or similar functioning. So we are grouping them into this group. And what is the other important aspect I discussed here? If you study one member of that group, whatever the study you make, it should be equally applicable to other members with minor changes. Means the members which have more similarities and less differences are grouped together. And one more important thing, the members which have all the fundamental characteristics same, the other characteristics are different. The basic characteristics must be same. Then you can put them in one group. So that is what we'll see with uh, some other examples. So we have seen that the characteristics are the basis of classification. So what are these characters? The characters means that define the appearance or behavior, form or function of an organism. You can compare the form of two different organisms to group them. You can compare the functioning of two different organisms to group them. So on basing these characteristics, we will do the classification. But organisms will have so many functions. Organisms may have different kind of appearances. That means organisms, they will be having so many similarities and dissimilarities. But which one you consider as the main character? You have to take the fundamental characters. Fundamental characters. So what are these fundamental characteristics? What are these fundamental characteristics? Let us consider A stone wall is made, a stone pillar is made, this pillar is made out of stones. You see, these are the bottommost brick of the pillar. So these three cases take A, B, C. They are similar. Above this, so depending upon the bottom brick, to make a straight wall, you will put another brick of in any other shape. So here also we have taken here we have taken So now, this is of another shape. So 
so you find three pillars but you see that the topmost bricks they will not decide how the bottom brick should be because these are formed first so whenever you are making a pillar or a wall step by step first you put the bottom stones the shape of the bottom stone will decide the next shape of the other stone which will which one will fit there so that means the fundamental characteristics are the bottom most or the primitive most characteristics when you are grouping three different organisms you cannot compare the similarities and differences between these top characters characteristics you have to consider the fundamental characteristics so here if you see the stones of the bottom part of this pole the basic or the primary stones are of similar shape that means the primary characters are similar so you can group them as one group yes one group if you look at these characteristics you say that they are different how can you group them because you have considered this character this characteristic what is that fundamental characteristic so you may get a doubt you may ask your teacher how can we and dogs are categorized in the same group how can dog and we become mammals then how can rat and elephant be mammals rat elephant rat elephant both are mammals they are under one group so you think that there is a lot of difference elephant is very big it has got very big ears very big body so it moves very slow rat is very small it can run so lots of differences you find by its external form appearance and you say that how both of these things will fit in same group that means you are observing these characters the top characters you are not looking at the fundamental characteristics what are the fundamental characteristics you see that there if you uh, see the elephant and rat why they are called mammals because both of them give birth to the young ones rats also give birth to the young ones elephant also give birth to the young ones rats feed the young ones with milk elephant also feed the young ones with milk rat has got hair on its its body elephant is also having hair on its body rat is having red color blood elephant is also having red color blood rat is having a digestive system with different parts similar to the elephant which is having a digestive system with similar parts rat is having different teeth to cut and chew the food elephant is also having the teeth to cut and chew the food this way you find number of similarities means you have to observe the fundamental characteristic so now i yes i can place this rat and elephant in the same group what do you, what is the difference you find initially you are observing one character that is the difference in size and you may be not accepting and you may be wondering how these two things have come into single group but if you see that many other areas other characteristics important fundamental characteristics there are more similarities so as they have more similarities they are grouped together the rat and elephant are kept in one group and you and dog are kept in one group so even we are also a part of this mammal group rats dogs cats all these are because we are warm blooded we give birth to the young ones we have hairs on our body and uh, the young ones are fed with milk by the mother so these are all the characters similar in all these cases if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus